In the last few videos, we have taken a look at some of the tools game artists use to draw digitally. We now know how to draw with outlines, with selections, and how to preserve our assets' transparency. But we only spoke about tools. Tools will not make a great artist out of you. They will only boost your efficiency. So as digital artists, we must learn to balance studying tools and improving our art skills. Right now, we have some tools at our disposal to work with. It is time to take a closer look at character design. Today, we are going to focus on drawing in itself. We are going to design a cute game character and start learning about some basic principles of design. The first step to creating a good character from your imagination is collecting good reference. If we only rely on our mental library of images, we are simply not going to learn much. References are our best source of study. Even experienced professionals use references. Tons of references. And art directors and creative directors in particular. I want to stress out this point. Every time we use references, we expand our visual library. We learn new shapes and patterns. We are given an occasion to pick up new knowledge about the subject matter we are studying. Studying references is our doorway to becoming great designers. In order to find good references, you can start by searching in your memory for relevant games, movies, weapon names, you name it. Anything that could be useful in order to create your character. This way, you can find keywords that you can search for on websites like Pinterest, for example. I recommend picking at least three or four reference images. In my case, I am going to pick pictures in my own reference library. As you can see, I actually have a library of more than 13,000 images on my hard drive. References are key to coming up with good designs eventually. Here are the references I have chosen for my character. For this specific project, I need it to be very fast. That is why I have referenced a style I know was very fast for me to draw. Before drawing our big character, we are going to make tiny sketches. Some professionals skip that step altogether, but I think this approach is very useful. The idea is to draw small and think big. We are going to draw so small that we can only establish the very broad design of our character. At this point, we can only focus on the rough proportions of our character relative to the game world. You can see that I'm working with very simple shapes. Circles, ellipses, squares. Those are the core fundamental shapes we use as artists. We are making a character for a game. This means that we have certain constraints. To be very specific, in a game, the gameplay is king. The way the game plays is going to determine the proportions and to some extent the style you can choose for your character. I know that I am doing a character for an arcade tennis game. The game is going to be multi-platform, so the character has to work on desktop, tablets and mobiles. This means I have to make him a bit big and slightly squashed, like a chibi. As the game I am working on has a top-down view, like the good old Zelda Link to the Past, I am giving the character a prominent head. I still want to go for some rounded rectangles rather than plain circles or ellipses to plot my character. This is mostly a matter of personal taste, and this keeps the character closer to real human beings compared to using circles. Ellipses tend to abstract our forms too much. If you use round shapes, your character will feel nicer, softer and cuter. If you use angular shapes, on the other hand, it will make him feel a bit more mature or even darker. If you want to make games for a broad audience, you need to be using rounder shapes. This is what we are doing with this cute character. With a few tiny sketches, I know what I want to go for. I am happy with the last character I drew, so I am going to use it as a base for bigger, more detailed drawings. Building the character step by step gives us an opportunity to focus on a limited set of principles of design at a time. Right now, we are going to focus on our character's balance, weight and shape language. When we shade it, we will think more about color and light. 
let me give you a quick note on sketching. You want to do as many sketches as you need to find the right character. As a professional, you often need to come up with 10 to 50 detailed variations of the same character for a client. If you are doing it for yourself, I recommend that you do at least three. Always do three or more different sketches before you pick your final character. This is critical for all design jobs. Our first idea is rarely the best. We often come up with cliches first and move towards more original ideas as we dig a topic more and more. In that case, the style of character I want to pick is the last one I drew. It is the one that will fit the game best. Here's a little trick for you. You can take your small sketch, scale it up and draw directly over it. You can see that I'm doing just that at the moment. I sketch the character from top to bottom, considering that his head is its most important part. Each body part is very simple in that case. It is just made of a single shape apart from the head. I carefully separate the hands from the body in order to give the character a strong silhouette. You can also see a big gap between the legs. Keeping some negative space between body parts make the character easier to read. With simple 2D game arts, the character's sketch or concept can often serve as a base for the final asset. That is why we are directly going to make the final character on top of one of those next few sketches. If we wanted to do more complex assets, we would need to break up the process a bit more. You can see that every time, I am taking the first character I drew and I am sketching a new variation or style from it. The very first character I have drawn actually corresponds to what I want to do. Its proportions are right for the game I am working on. And I know it because of the tiny drawings we made before. So now I am doing just that, variations. The second sketch has a more detailed look and the character feels a tiny bit more agile. He also has rounded shapes and a more dynamic silhouette. I want him to feel slightly more manga-ish. For the third one, I am thinking about an animal like a sheep and designing it like a plush. The idea in that case is to see if I can make a cuter character. But considering that I am working on a very dynamic game and that the characters will use weapons, I am not going to choose this concept. Having done three sketches, I bounce back to the original one and try to make a detailed version out of it. Ultimately, I will pick my original sketch. Yet, I can only do so at the lights of the other sketches I have made. Those sketches have confirmed that my first idea would fit the game best. We now have a sketch. From the previous how to game art, you know what comes next in the drawing process. First inking and then shading. We are going to do just that, but focus on the design side of the process a little more. So uh, the drawing of the final sketch for this character is missing as the recording crashed, sorry for that. Looking at the sketch, I know that I won't be keeping contours on the character eventually. So I am just going to follow the shapes and fill them really fast. Soon it is time to choose colors. As this is the first asset I am doing for this game, I don't have a predefined color palette. I approximately know the kinds of tones I want, but I will have to search for precise colors. Actually, I do this in passes. The character will be shaded once, and then I will use some compositing tricks to enhance its values and colors. You shouldn't ever pick colors from a photo or a reference image. You want to learn to find them using only your eyes. This is a great way to learn how to use colors. You just open up the Photoshop color picker and try to find the precise color corresponding to your reference image. I recommend using a simple shading for your characters. The most common type of shading in 2D animation is what we tend to wrongly call cell shading. Cell shading is actually a method of 3D rendering that is meant to imitate the looks of 2D illustrations. There are at least two good reasons for us to use a cell shaded type of style. First, we need our characters to really pop out of the background. 
In practice, we will achieve this using less saturated colors in the background, as well as using a slightly different style of shading. You see this all the time in comics and feature animation. The background is often painterly while the characters are cell shaded. Then, in order to animate our characters eventually, we will need to redraw lots of limbs. With this type of shading, it is pretty fast to do. It is very easy to animate the character's shadows as they are only based on a few specific colors. Let us come back to colors for a second. For this character, I chose a warm red skin tone, a strong red for the pants and the hands, and a light yellow-green for the remainder of his clothes. For one, the red makes sense mostly because the character will be placed above a blue sky and background full of nature. It is also a statement. His fists will be used to hold the weapon and hit. This makes them pop out of the background. His legs will also move more than his upper body, which is why I want them to be really visible. You can see that I am still playing with some of the character's shapes. Although we kind of have to follow the drawing process step by step, creating game assets and drawing in general is still an iterative process. This means that you have to come back over and over to various parts of your creation to refine them. You are not supposed to get it right on the first trial. You can see that the light is coming from the top. I am not plotting my shadows per se, because I am used to drawing characters like that. Having only one light source, it is pretty easy to place the character's shadows. There are shadows below the bandana, under the nose and chin, and everything that is facing down pretty much. I am using two steps of shadows with some hue shifting in order to make the character feel a bit detailed. As always, I then keep painting every limb one by one until the character is done. And there you go. Here's a cute character for a top-down game. To sum it up, the key points for making such a character are using round shapes, using bright and saturated colors, and squashing him a little bit. That's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Alright, so hopefully it gave you a broad overview of some of the design concepts involved in creating game assets. In future videos, we will be analyzing how other designers make their characters and their game assets. This will also be an occasion to break down the individual concepts that can barely be covered in a video like this one. So if you want to see more tutorials like this one, uh, don't hesitate to become a subscriber. I will keep releasing one new video every week. Thank you for watching.